uh, good morning to all today uh, let's see how the variations are being produced in a plant kingdom normally when you uh, look into the evolutionary aspects of uh, plants the angiosperms the gymnosperms pteropods algae or wherever the variations are produced because of the sexual reproduction wherein the meiosis uh, the segregation of chromosomes are going to happen but uh, in the year 1850s uh, wherein the renard first time reported the artifacts of the uh, micro propagationary uh, plants now during that process what happened he reported some abnormal plants now what are the abnormal plants these are the variations induced by the uh, micro propagatory protocols now such variations as resulted because of the soma somatic cells nothing but the vegetative cells they have been termed as the soma clonal variations now in order to differentiate the normally existing variations which are nothing but the uh, gametoclonal variations gametes are responsible for the variations because of the meiosis but in vitro during the tissue cultural conditions many of the factors leads to the variations and that if they result in a successful production of a new plant as a new variety or uh, new uh, species then these are known as the soma clonal variations now let's look into the different aspects of soma clonal variations now the most of the artifacts earlier days they were simply discarded uh, neglecting their actual importance but these days many of the variations have been produced are actually important in varieties of the uh, plant applications now the occurrence most of the occurrence of uh, the variations are inferred in their phenotypes so if you identify a different plant compared to the mother plant then you can consider them as a variations earlier as i said they were dismissed as an artifacts or unwanted variations or unwanted species now nature normally variations are produced because of the meiosis which happens in the gametic cells soma clonal variations on the other hand has provided a new and alternative tool to the breeders for obtaining genetic variability relatively very rapid without any sophisticated technology in the horticultural crops which are either difficult to breed or have narrow genetic bases now when you consider the horticultural crops most of them are the perennials and uh, to emphasize the perennials have a very long uh, uh, survival time now if imagine you are looking for an artifact or a variation in a mango consider an alfonso if you are a conventional breeder you have to sow the seed today and you have to wait at least 8 to 10 years for the natural variations to be produced that itself take lots of time as the alfonso is a perennial species but on the other hand if you take an explant from the uh, alfonso maybe a leaf an internode or a node or any meristem or whatever tissue starting from the root to the shoot tip meristematic now in vitro if you are able to generate even a single variations compared to the mother plant then those variations are to be termed as the soma clonal variations as the somatic cells they are responsible for the variations being produced now having said that what are the basis of uh, the so called variations nothing but the soma clonal variations you can categorize them as the two major factors number one the expression of a chromosomal mosaicism or the genetic disorders the second one is because of the spontaneous mutations due to the cultural conditions now mutations yes a sudden change in the genome of a plant or any individual it could be due to the varied nutrient or the cultural conditions and mutagenic effects of metabolic products or a by products which uh, tends to accumulate during the course of the uh, tissue cultural conditions in the media they do exert their own impact on the chromosomal number chromosomal uh, structural variations or whatever which may lead to the mutation ultimately or you have the different transposable elements which uh, take or hijack a, a portion of a chromosome from one chromosome to the other or within a chromosome from one place to the other so this leads to the uh, uh, you know uh, change in the phenotype gradually then uh, crossing over this is also an important aspects normally when we uh, say crossing over 
we consider only meiosis but even the somatic cells are during the mitosis the chromosomes the sister chromatids do cross over and this also leads to the uh, uh, sudden change in the genotype or nothing but a mutation then the changes in the cytoplasmic genome now what is the cytoplasmic genome you have the organelle in the form of mitochondria or the chloroplast remember these are the autonomous structure because of their own uh, uh, dna content now as they are considered to be the symbionts meaning that from the primitive uh, prokaryotes which have entered into the larger cell they because of their uh, very content of dna gradually they donated all their dna to the host cell and though the the dna has been expressed in the uh, transfer to the uh, nuclear cell but uh, nuclear nuclear uh, genome from nucleus the dna will be transferred back in the form of a proteins or rna which gets expressed in these cytoplasmic organelle nothing but mitochondria or chloroplast now as they do possess their own genome or their genome resides in the nucleus whatever happens in between maybe the expression level or the quantity or the mutation now even this gets reflected in the phenotype all put together brings in the somaclonal variations now again to emphasize the first point uh, varied nutrients now what we believe micro with micro propagation we can do wonders with all the you know chemically uh, added substances but remember all these how they exert their impact from a single cell to a new plant it's all because of the stress factors because of these stress factors again many of the dna abnormalities are resulted and put together they bring in the uh, somaclonal variations and another important aspect when the x plant in the uh, inoculated on a media when they start to respond with respect to the growth regulators maybe an auxin or a cytokinin abscisic acid gibberellin or an ethylene or owing to different other aspects contained in a media what they do along with the primary metabolism they also tend to accumulate and secrete many of the secondary metabolites now secondary metabolites might be the nitrogen one or something else but they are not required for the very growth and development especially in vitro now when they those concentration increases in the media gradually they become intoxicated the explant become intoxicated and that itself acts on the stress factor along with other components of a media so this is also very crucial when you talk about the somaclonal variational inducing factors so put together these bring in the somaclonal variations and gets reflected in uh, the morphology or other aspects now you may have generated different somaclones now this is actually cutting short the breeding cycle i already stated the example of perennial or an alfonso form wherein you have to wait at least a decade to bring in the variations which you may desire but if that is the case whatever the variations you have produced that becomes a new variety so you need to name them if you are a true breeder so in even in the uh, gametoclonal variations you need to name them now in the case of somaclonal variations the variations are a new variety can be uh, named as ro or r1 r2 r3 in the subsequent generations now this could be taken in otherwise somaclonal variation somaclones nothing but they are abbreviated as sc now first generation becomes sc1 nothing but ro sc1 is equal to ro and the subsequent generations can be named as sc2 sc3 sc4 so long and so forth now yes you have generated somaclonal variations in vitro but what if they are not getting recognized that uh, signifies the process of selecting or isolating the somaclonal variations or the somaclonal variants now you can do that while the culturing process itself that process is known as with in vitro selection in vitro refers to the cultural condition micro propagation conditions wherein when you day to when you observe day to day day in and day out basis the variations maybe it's all getting reflected because of the off coloring of the media or the changes bring brought in into the uh, plant or you can do at the very last stage that is whenever you have produced a plant the last step is the hardening process in the hardening process as we are all know the plant should get acquainted not to the in vitro conditions but 
to the surrounding environment which changes every time every second every minute every hour so during the hardening process if you are able to select it's well and good if not again you have to wait when the plant has been transferred to the greenhouse condition again if you are unable to isolate osmoclonal variations gradually the plant is uh, transferred to a field even in the field condition when the plant is growing according to the environmental uh, bottlenecks the expression of the variation may get expressed if you are able to identify the somaclonal variations in these aspects not in in vitro but maybe during a hardening process or in the greenhouse or in a field now such process becomes without in vitro selection now when you compare both the in vitro and in vit uh, with in vitro and without in vitro uh, conditions there are a lot of uh, uh, pros and cons now without in vitro condition the explant is cultured on a suitable media as the regular basis of uh, micropropagation supplemented with growth regulators and uh, all the essentials in the form of macro elements micro elements vitamins and organics and iron edta now gradually the uh, undifferentiated cell nothing but an explant uh, uh, brings in its meristematic activity because of the dedifferentiation process and maybe callus might get uh, uh, resulted now that callus as it contain a different mass of cells with the uh, morphological genetical variations they could be the responsible factor now if that is the case these sub uh, uh, cultures are subcultured and transferred to the shoot induction media why because ultimately you want a variations to be produced in the form of a plant so after shoot production it has to be rooted and transferred into the greenhouse gradually now uh, in the next uh, lecture we'll see the other aspects of somaclonal variations thank you